Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days. Well, today's second video, day 10, will take us to the 28th of February, last day of the month. And we'll be able to extend out beyond that instead of GFS and ECF ensembles. We're around a couple of weeks. Have a look at CFSB2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. Gets us well into uh, the middle of March. I'll get on that for you in a moment. Just say the first video we say was our 6am upload. Of course, got all the detail on Storm Eunice, which is currently uh, sweeping across the country as I speak. So, um, yeah, check out the 6am upload if you would like to do that. Um, no Jeremy Frame. We're going back a little bit on the uh, add-ons, on the additions at the uh, moment, uh, you know, while things settle down here at Gasworthy's Towers. So, uh, we're just doing two videos a day at the moment. 6am upload at the 10 to 14 day. I hope that's okay with everybody. Of course, we're going to look at the CFS anyway in this video. Hey, I'm going to be Friday. I hope you're staying safe, though, with these winds. It is very, very, very blowy out there and that's where we're going to start with this video so we've got warnings galore across the whole country we've got warnings for wind warnings for snow warnings for ice it's the wind warning that we're most concerned about of course this red warning just here we've got two above so this is running until midday so it's going to expire in around 10 minutes from when i'm recording the video this is the southwestern parts of england and the far south east of wales uh so so red warnings are danger to life you know uh so, so this is very very important Pathway D. But it did get extended. The red warning did get extended, though, to the far south and southeastern corner as well. And this is valid until 3 p.m. this afternoon. So the strongest of winds will sort of transfer from the southwest towards the southeast along the south coast, I suppose. And uh, again, they're saying storm units causing significant disruption and dangerous conditions due to extremely strong winds on Friday. Gusts up to like 80 miles an hour or more uh, in those areas. And we get a red warning that is danger to life, as I say. So if you're at all worried about storm units then do please check out the weather warnings at UK Mayor Thompson. We don't issue severe weather warnings at gas levels. We're not qualified to do that. The only people who are qualified to advise you about your safety uh, is is the uh, UK Met. So do check out warnings at the UK Met. But quite unusual to see like red warning get extended like that. So we have the red warning when I recorded the 6 m upload, upload last night for the far southwest. Um, but overnight, it actually got extended into the southeastern corner. So I wanted to start there and make everybody, uh, you know, aware. Of course, we've also got a widespread amber warning across the whole of England and Wales. And then we go further north and we've got the snow and ice warnings in the northern half of the uh, country. So, uh, so yeah, really significant where we've got more warnings... Uh, <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, got more warnings in place for tomorrow. Uh, wind and ice across many parts of the country. Uh, wind and rain warning for Sunday and uh, wind warning in the north uh, for Monday. So there's still going to be plenty more going on even after Eunice. The uh, latest wind gusts or biggest wind gusts down in the southwest at the moment, 82 miles out here at XC Weather, uh, Isle of Portland, and also down there at Northwick. I think southeast Wales has also got 80 mile an hour gusts. Not quite as strong as that inland, but even so, gusting up to like 50, 60, 70 miles an hour through more inland areas and around these Irish Sea coasts of Wales as well. So, um, yeah, the action is very much in the south, and, and uh, Eunice is doing exactly what we expected it would do, bringing uh, disruptive weather and disruptive winds to many places. The strongest winds are with this band of rain here, squally rain that's pushing eastwards, uh, uh, pushing eastwards and, and then behind that, particularly on the southern, southwestern flank of that wet weather, uh, that's where those strongest gusts are moving in across those southern counties. So it's wild out there. Take care if you're off out, uh, you know, in, in the uh, wind of rain and uh, up north snow as well uh, this afternoon. Uh, it's all happening and uh, some really, really disruptive weather so look after yourself if you're off out and about in the next few hours just bring you up to date what's going on stratosphere wise so uh these are the current uh, temperatures at 10 hpa over the uh, north pole still uh colder than average it just will not warm up will it so uh, we should be up here with the gray line it's from the jma by the way we're actually down there somewhere close to around minus 65 uh degrees at 10 hpa if we go a little bit low down to 30 hpa even colder there we remain under minus 80 it's incredible how long we've sustained these very, very cold temperatures. We should be up here somewhere now around uh, minus 65. So, uh, you know, around 20 degrees below average 
at 30 uh, HPA and 10 degrees below average at 10 HPA. We are going to get uh, a warming of the stratosphere though. So uh, this is how stratospheric temperatures are currently uh, looking. These are the blue curves that are the cold temperatures at 10 HPA. Um, and this is the GFS forecast for the next couple of weeks from Metro CL. So as we run through, we see that those blue curves of cold temperature 10 HPA uh, remain over the North Pole, but we get this quite significant warming developing from the Atlantic into northern parts of Europe through the early part of next week. So a bit of the warming of the stratosphere takes place through the early part of next week in the uh, North Atlantic and pushing into sort of uh, Europe and uh, and Western Russia uh, type area. And uh, and then that sort of intensifies, or it doesn't really intensify, it kind of moves around into the pole and begins to disrupt the position of the polar vortex. So by the time we get through to the end of the GFS, where it gets us to 6th of March, the blue colours, the cold temperatures, which would be polar vortex at its roots, if you like, in the stratosphere, they've been pushed over towards uh, Northern Europe and uh, also to Western and Russia and over top of the pole itself we have got quite a significant warming of the stratosphere uh, going on. This does fall short of a sudden stratospheric warming, but given the lateness of the year, this is going to increase temperatures a, a lot and should have uh, quite a dramatic weakening effect on the polar vortex, I would have thought, as we go further on through March and possibly into April. Maybe even we'll set up some normal blocking, you know, as we go into the spring. I would not rule that out. The latest uh, ECM, it happens more often than you would think, uh, that we have a mild winter with no northern blocking and then we set it up in uh, in March or April. Um, latest uh, G. Uh, ECM, uh, a six weekly forecast, extended range forecast, looks like this again for those red colours uh, next week. So these are again temperatures 10 HPA forecast, uh, 21st, 28th of February again, those red colours, that's the warming of stratosphere, but GFS was showing across the Atlantic and Northern Europe next week. Um, that sort of fades out a little bit, but, but kind of becomes more widespread across the pole itself as we go through the first week of March. Week three also showing quite a, uh, you know, quite, quite a significant change uh, as we go into March. Again, I think we are falling short of a sudden stratospheric warming here, but certainly a significant warming of the stratosphere. That should have a very, very much a dampening effect on the polar vortex and uh, whatnot. And that carries on all the way up to the end of uh, March into the beginning of April. Week 6 is 28th of March, 6th of April. Look at the difference with those red colours over Greenland and over top of the pole. So I think I think this uh, very strong polar vortex and really cold stratosphere that's been driving it all winter. I think it's winding down now as we're moving on into the spring and we have to wait and see what the effects are as we get into the spring of that winding down when we have like a sudden stress threat warming type effect. If we have a sudden deceleration of the very strong zone winds um, and set up blocking into the spring, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, right, centering temperature is standing at 7.1, that's 3.4 degrees above average, that's provisional to uh, yesterday, to the 17th of the month, so uh, very, very mild February, of course. Uh, these are the uh, GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks, so the red line is the 30-year upper air temperature average for London, very up and down to start off with, so uh, really zonal weather uh, with warmer and cooler and warmer and cooler and warmer and cooler sectors alternating getting to the first week of March as this period just here it looks like then we're hovering close to average but we do tend to lose the zonal sine wave anyway as we get into the extended range of the ensemble so it might be but we'll keep um, donality going through the first week of March quite unsettled as well so plenty of precipitation spikes to come over the next few days that's a little bit drier in the last week of the month and then the rainfall really coming back through the first week of March with again significant spells of wet weather uh, likely temperature anomaly is on the 18th to the 26th of February, a little bit below average in the north, a little bit above average in the south. Uh, precipitation anomaly is on the 18th to 26th of February, wetter than average in central and northern regions, a little bit drier than average in the far south and southwest. Latest wind flow map from earthnoldschool.net shows storm Eunice right over the top of the country. There it is, strongest winds uh, coming around the southern side of Eunice. Um, so, yeah, you know, uh, you can see a very, very deep area of low pressure sitting over the country and the strongest of the winds of course are going to be around here uh with uh, with the set like the southwest and uh, eventually into the southeastern corner as well look after yourself if you're off out and about 
today. Right, let's go through chart date. Today, this is UK Met Euro uh, running. It's talking big night on Monday. Cold and showery northwesterly winds. Then a little bit of ridge of a little bit of a ridge of high pressure on Tuesday before the next low coming in through Wednesday and Thursday. We'll bring further spells of rain, and then we're into cool and showery conditions when we get through to uh, big night on Friday. Just a slight transient ridge building, then, but more low pressure is waiting in the wings in the Atlantic. It looks very unsettled uh, for the last week of uh, February. I can't again cold showery northwesterly winds on Monday a little bit of a ridge on Tuesday but we're back into wet and windy weather through Wednesday and Thursday uh, by Friday we turn wind into a northwesterly to northerly so it turned a little bit colder then maybe a bit of a cold snap with some wintry showers in the north and there's a little ridge building across the country ahead of the next area of low pressure in the Atlantic that's threatening to bring more wet and windy weather GFS midnight run again looking cold showery windy uh, through Monday into Tuesday a little bit of a ridge and on into the middle of next week looks rather wet and windy and we keep these wet and windy conditions driving in up to day 10 which is 28th of February that's a very deep area of low pressure then for the last day of the month ending February and meet Joshua winter 2021 2022 on quite a stormy note. Into extended rain going through the first week of March. Stays unsettled. Low pressure continuing to be uh, around anyway. Um, maybe not as stormy, but certainly still spells of rain. Uh, GFS 6Z, again, cold and showery on Monday. A little bit dry for Tuesday, then to Wednesday, Thursday, wet and windy. Um, and, you know, it just carries on really right the way up to day 10, which is 28th of February. That looks quite stormy this time for the northern half of the country. Through the extent range into the first week of March, again, it's just low pressure driving in off the Atlantic. That's bringing further spells of rain. And becoming a little bit cold as well as the jet stream is beginning to shift southwards. Whether that could be in response to the warming of the stratosphere, but uh, by this point will be quite well entrenched i'm not sure but definitely the six end starts to move the jet stream south so not only unsettled but also beginning to get a little bit colder as well with those areas of low pressure uh, GM, again, it looks cold and showery on Monday. Then we're into unsettled conditions throughout next week, really, with low pressure carrying on driving in from off the Atlantic. That's day 10, 28th of February, when, again, we're looking pretty wet and windy. It doesn't look so the last day of the month. is um, Winter is likely to be quite stormy. And then uh, ECM, again, cold, showery, northwesterly winds on Monday. A little bit of a ridge on Tuesday. And then we're back into uh, unsettled weather. We're saying unsettled weather all wet to day 10 with low pressure. Just, just continuing to drive in from off the Atlantic Ocean. This is a precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from Tometio.com. We've got so many north today. Rain down in the south. Of course, the main story is the winds in southern areas. A little area of rain, sleet and snow pushing across England and Wales tomorrow. Keeps the unsettled weather going. And then further wet weather really coming and going throughout. Not continuously wet. We'll be drying to lose, but uh, plenty of rain to come. And uh, at times cold enough for snow, especially so in the north. Finishing up wet and windy for the last day of the month. These are the options on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10, which will get us to the 28th of February. 19 members of the ECM ensembles with low pressure to the north and west, high pressure to the south and southeast. Winds in from the westerly direction, unsettled, uh, maybe even quite stormy for the last day of the month. 18 members of the ECM ensembles, just a little bit strong with the ridge um, to our east and south, but still with this deep low to the west, and that's going to be uh, breaking down that ridge, of course. And then 14 again, high pressure to the east, low pressure to the west. It's all driving in off the Atlantic. It's just how strong that ridge is to the southeast. Even if the ridge does build to the southeast. We're only talking about timings here. It's still unsettled. And it stays unsettled into day 10. Uh, into two weeks' time, I should say. Uh, this gets us to the 5th of March. 25 members of the ECL on Sol's M. With deep low pressure over the country. Just beginning to move a little bit further southwards as well. So it's starting to turn a little bit cooler, perhaps, with that. Uh, 17, again, low pressure in off the Atlantic. Looking rather wet and windy. And then 9, again, with low pressure out to the west, bringing in unsettled conditions. So this unsettled spell of weather is going to carry on into early March by the look of it. Uh, so this week to finally, and then we're done. Uh, so these are 500 millibar heights bring down to week period. So first week period will take us from the 18th to 24th of February. The coming week is dominated by low pressure over to the north of the country. High pressure is to the south, and winds are coming in from a westerly direction. Looking rather wet and windy, of course, in the week here. Week two is the 25th of February to the 3rd of March. Just trying to raise the heights a little bit to the south, but still with low pressure out to the northwest. Jet stream is going northwards as well. So that would imply that the south turns a little bit more 
more uh, a little bit more settled. I'm not sure about that, to be honest. And then that training carries on to week three, which is before to the 10th of March. High pressure is back in business then, um, more or less over the top of the country. Again, the shorter range was looking more unsettled, though, for early March. And week four is the 11th to the 17th of March, with a big ridge then right in over top of the country. So maybe we find ourselves back to high pressure as we get into March. I have to say, at the moment, like the ECM, GFS, those models are looking pretty unsettled into the first week of March anyway. So uh, we wait and see what happens there. But CFS wants to get us back to the ridge, back to high pressure. That's been the dominating factor through most of the winter, of course. Um, the shorter range at the moment looking unsettled. So uh, we wait and see where things go, I think, as we move into early March. But certainly the rest of February to the start of March, anyway, I think is going to be uh, quite unsettled, even if it's not as stormy as today. Right, we're done with today's video then, so if you enjoyed this video, please give me a smash your like button, make sure you're subscribed to our channel, thank you so much for doing that, drop a comment, let us know what you think about this and all of our videos, and don't forget to tell your friends and family about Gals Lovers, and get them to subscribe as well, that's great, it's incredible, thank you so much everybody uh, for doing that. Right, so uh, we are done then uh, with today's uh, content, just tell you what's coming up tomorrow, so again it'll be 6 a.m. upload and uh, 10 to 14 day, no EC extended or weekend forecast, I'm just getting back the additions at the moment, I hope everybody understands you know it's been a difficult time uh for me and and uh, uh um, and missy p and, and whatnot so um i hope you all understand that we're just getting things back a little bit and uh we're still trying to bring you the important videos though which are i think the 6am upload and uh and the 10 to 14 day uh right then so uh, that's it you enjoy the rest of your friday do take care if you're off in uh off out and about with but storm Eunice. you know it's really nasty out there heed the warnings check them out at the uk met if you're at all concerned and uh, uh, and yeah, the worst, it should be over by sort of late afternoon, early evening, I think. So a few more hours of this to go and then things should start to begin to wind down a little bit. Right, uh, we'll be back with more tomorrow. But for today's videos, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.